Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has apologised for leaving the DD anniversary events early to take part in a TV interview. He wrote quite a long apology on X, just ending with saying that on reflection, it was a mistake not to stay in France longer. And I apologise, that's what he said. Labour, though, has accused the Prime Minister of a dereliction of duty after missing the high profile event with the world leaders on Omaha Beach. Now, the Prime Minister has paid tribute to veterans earlier in the commemoration events, but returned to Britain before the ceremony was completely over. So Sunak has apologised, but should he apologise? Should he have apologised? And does this just show that he's a little bit out of touch, Albie? No, it doesn't show that he's out of touch. Look, I'm not going to defend the fact that he left the ceremony in France early. I think that was a very, very stupid decision indeed. Well, the, se the last event was just a photo op, wasn't it? But it's not, it's not just a photo op. These, these pictures are important. I think in the middle of an election campaign, it would have been so powerful to get a picture with the, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor of Germany, the President of France and the President of the United States of America in the middle of an election campaign. I mean, that's gold dust. So I think from a, from a campaigning perspective, it was a stupid decision. From a perspective that he's been running the campaign on defence and duty, it's a stupid decision. And from a moral perspective, it is a stupid decision. But on the question about whether or not it shows that he's out of touch. No, I don't think it does show that he's out of touch, because ultimately he made a mistake and he's apologised. And when people make mistakes and they apologise, that is something that humans do. And I think it shows his character. It's not very often you get Prime Ministers apologise for things. Oh, when, come Boris on, Johnson, when Boris Johnson Just was in power, on. he didn't apologise for things. So I think it shows his strength of character. He made a mistake, he's owned up to it, and he's okay, apologised. So just to be very clear, you don't think it shows that he's out of touch, it shows that he made a mistake and a strength of character in the fact that he apologise, Matt. What do you reckon? I mean, until you started saying that this is somehow a positive look for Sudak because he... Say it was no, positive. The, the fact that he said... The, the fact he said sorry and made an apology, I was kind of with you. This is... Let's be absolutely clear about this. A complete disaster for Sunak. Imagine leaving the 80th anniversary commemorations for D-Day, honouring our war dead who gave so much. Imagine leaving that early in order to try and save your campaign by doing a TV interview, and then trashing your campaign in the process. If Rishi Sunak can work out today that it was a mistake, it wasn't just a mistake, it was dishonouring those who have served this country, and yes, completely out of touch with the general British population. If he could work out it's a mistake today, why on earth didn't he work out it was a mistake yesterday? This apology rings hollow. Yes, of course it's important that people do apologise, but are we going to forgive this quite so, quite so quickly? I, I, it's difficult to conceive of a more disastrous election campaign than Sunak has so far run. Who's advising him? If he doesn't have the political judgment, why are the people around him not telling him how it works? And let me just say this, Theresa May, viewers will remember, it's not long ago, in 2017, Theresa May ran one of the most hopeless election campaigns in history. It was her decision to call a, a hugely early general election, and she managed, far from increasing the Tory majority, she managed to wipe out the Tory majority. Mm -hmm. We've still got about four weeks left in this campaign, and Sunak has managed to underperform Well, hold that. on. You say that he's managed to underperform. When they had the leaders' debate earlier on this week, Rishi Sunak initially, in initial polls, came out on top, people thought that his performance was better. But since then, it has been a little bit of a, a disaster, Albie, for a couple of reasons, accusations of lying about the 2000 tax and now the leaving early from the D-Day events. Who's making these decisions? Do you think this is a fault of Rishi Sunak or is this his PR team? It's a really difficult campaign for the party at the moment. It's actually it's quite difficult to watch as a supporter of the Conservatives, someone who knows lots of Tory activists, Tory candidates that are hoping to get elected for the first time and re-elected people who were formerly MPs. It's, it's really frustrating to keep seeing all of these mistakes being made. You know, I've met the Prime Minister, I know the Prime Minister... I think he needs to trust his instincts more than trusting whoever these idiots are around him who are advising him. But he I doesn't let me have tell, any instincts. Let me, let me he tell doesn't you, have any Let me tell instincts. you, Matt, why his apology does not ring hollow. Because we, if we actually look at the Prime Minister's record and the Conservative Party's record on veterans, the Conservative Party set up the Office of Veterans. There isn't even a shadow minister for veterans in the Labour shadow cabinet. That shows you Labour's commitment to veterans. It is the Conservative Party that has pledged to spend two percent 5% of GDP on defence by 2030. 
a pledge that Labour has not managed to match, by the way. So if you are concerned about defence and veterans in this country, it is the Conservative Party who, is, who has delivered and who will deliver in the future, not so, sorry, the Labour talk, Party. Talk about being out of touch, Albie. Do you seriously think if we did a poll of veterans who have given so much for this country that they would be satisfied by the way in which they have been treated by this government? This is a man, Rishi Sunak, who wants 18-year-olds, as soon as they become adults, to be forced into some form of national service. Service. He can't even last out one of the most important symbolic days for this country in years, the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings when so many of our grandparents gave so much. My own grandfather won the military cross for going up to the German lines on his motorbike for outstanding bravery, lay, laying the foundations, the reconnaissance work for what those 156,000 men, and yes, they were men in, 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 in those days, gave when they crowded onto those beaches so bravely, so heroically for our freedoms. And our prime minister, who wants our 18-year-olds who've been desperately underserved anyway by these Tory governments, 14 years of it. He wants them to go into some sort of national service. He can't last out a day of memorial, a momentous day, not just for this country, but internationally. And what happens as a consequence? The leader of the opposition, the man who would almost certainly be prime minister in four weeks' time, gets the photo ops instead. It yes. is catastrophically I made the poor. point that the decision not to stay at the D-Day ceremony was a bad decision. I think you what and does I, it say about you his and character? I, you and I agree on that. The points I was making were actually about his record on veterans and his record on defence compared to the Labour Party's record on veterans. The Tory Party and has the run down the army. Have it's you looked nothing. at the figures? Tens of thousands so why is fewer it, why in the is British the army won't commit than there were in 2010. Of of GDP on defence by 2030. Well, let, let, let me answer that. First of all, I'm, like you're not a spokesman for the Tory party, I'm not a spokesman for the Labour party. You but what, what I, I do broadly want to have a Labour government, what I will say is that Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer have made the absolute central plank of this campaign the need not to make uncosted commitments that they might not be able to keep. And that is about economic Economic excuses, responsibility. Excuses. I'm going to go to calls now. Uh, Carol from Mid Glamorgan, you have heard what the panel has to say. How did you feel when you heard that Rishi Sunak had left a little bit early to record a TV interview back home? Carol. There is a saying, uh, hello, Storm. Hi. Hi nice, very nice to talk to you. Um, there is a saying, action speaks louder than words. You can dress it up, you can spin it all you like. It's not a party political issue. It is a lack of respect for our war dead. Or can we had people, is it a mistake? We had a lady 104 years of age in a wheelchair. She went there to respect her comrades who died at D-Day. And that man left that event early. Now, you can dress it up, Tory Labour. I don't care. I'm not religious. I'm not a royalist. It is a lack of respect. Actions speak louder than words. Well, I mean, if you were to defer, d defend Rishi here, you would say that his actions were that he was over there, he was present during the, the ceremonies in the morning, he, uh, you know, commemorated the, the war dead, he spoke to veterans, he just left before the event on Omaha Beach, which was for the world leaders. So arguably, does that say that he cares more about the campaign than he does a photo op with world leaders? I mean, Albie makes the comment that actually those pictures would have been no. dust for him, but I'm, yeah. I'm just trying it's to defend him though. in some way to think that is there a way of saying that actually he was just trying to please everybody? Now, when he's prime minister, he, he'll have regular meetings with the king, won't he? Yes. Would he walk out on the king? I don't imagine he would, Carol, but I don't wonder whether he felt no, like he was we are talking out. about, we are to, we, if we cannot spend one single day out of 365 in a year with the people who defended Europe mm. and gave their lives for these, I, I'm sorry, it's it, inexcusable. And would it, you be, would you have been a Rishi Sunak supporter prior to this? Absolutely not. No, no, no. The man is a liar. 
And he, there, are, there are several allegations, but there are several allegations going around about his involvement with Moderna and a hedge fund and insider trading. Okay, well, it's never I, been investigated. Okay, well, I don't, I don't know anyway, anything about that. Can't substantiate any of those accusations. I thought you were referring to the two thousand pounds and whether that was a lie, because you know he said that that number had been come up by the Treasury. He also didn't explain that it was over a four year period, and some people are calling him a liar over that situation. But since the leaders debate, it has sort of gone downhill for him. I just wonder whether actually this has been blown slightly out of proportion because it's a campaign and parties are jumping on this, Matt, as something that they can really drill home on because they know it has the hearts and, and souls and, and minds of our country. There's no doubt, of course, Labour are going to jump all over this for their own interests. Not just Labour, Lib Dems. No, well, in, 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 indeed. But what does that say about our Prime Minister's political judgment that he was able to make such a catastrophic, self-destructive, as well as offensive to the nation and to the war dead, mistakes such as that in the middle of a campaign that he himself kicked off by announcing that there was going to be election in the pouring rain? This man has no political instinct. I will just say, by the way, and I, I, you know, and, and viewers will know from me having been on the show before, I don't want this Conservative government to survive. But he's, clear, he's, he's clearly a highly intelligent man, Rishi Sunak, and I'm sure he works very hard. And actually, although there are some people who suggest he just wants to swan off to San Francisco, I think he actually cares. I think he does want to win. The problem is he has no political judgment and he does and says bad things in his self interest. Mick from Chester, what's your view when it comes to Rishi Sunak leaving the uh, DD events early? Um, to be honest, I think he's probably made a mistake, but the subject I wanted to bring up um, was between the two gentlemen there. If anybody sits on the television and says this country looks after their veterans or cares about them, is either deluded or a blatant liar. They are deluded. No politician has ever done anything for a veteran. That guy on the left, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I told him this last week when we were talking about national service. Hello, it's Mick again. Hello, Mick. From now, Chester. Good to see you. Yeah, hello. Now, no politician cares. That gentleman on the right said his father won an MC. So he must have been a very brave man. Now, our yeah. veterans are not looked after. We have... 2,200 military charities in this country sitting on over £3 billion. I'm sat here screaming every time I get out of a chair because of the service-related injury I've got and I cannot get an operation. OK, £20,000 the operation will cost. So then, uh, what I'm saying is Rishi Sunak has just done what everyone else does with veterans. Photo opportunity, let's get a photo, that's it, and then... Stick him in the bin, because that's what we do with our veterans. Nick, we ignore Nick, them. I'm sorry, but, but the, the veterans minister, Johnny Mercer, would vehemently disagree with what you have just said. And look, no one is saying the situation with veterans in this country is perfect. But to say that the Conservative Party and the government have done absolutely nothing for veterans is just not true. I'm very sorry to hear about your situation. I hope it is resolved as quickly as possible. I think we should be looking after our veterans more. But to say this government has done nothing for veterans is just untrue. But actually what Mick's saying here is no government does anything for veterans. So I'm wondering, Mick, from your perspective, when you look at a story like this, I can understand your anger towards Rishi Sunak, but I wonder how you feel when you look at all the other parties jumping on this and pointing finger, fingers where, when to say, you nobody yeah, does you, anything. Thank you much, Storm. That is the point I'm trying to make. It doesn't matter which government is in power. None of them care about veterans. They simply don't. And it's virtue signalling. Johnny Mercer, I'm afraid, he may be a well-meaning guy, but he doesn't do anything that I have ever seen tangible. Tangible. Made any tangible change to the conditions of veterans living. 3.2 billion in charities, and we've got veterans living on the streets. So you tell me, how on earth this country looks after its veterans? Mick, I just say... It simply I, doesn't. Mick, Mick, I would say, first of all, thank you to you for what you have done for this country. And I have always said, as someone who has not signed up for our armed forces, that the major dividing line in our society is between those such as yourself who are brave enough to do that and the vast majority of us, including me, who have not done that, at least in peacetime. So enormous credit to you as well as solidarity to you for what you've gone through. 
I would just say from a left-leaning perspective that I think the fault here over the last 14 years lies firmly with this Conservative government, but I will also stick up for Johnny Mercer. He may make mistakes himself, but I think he, ha he really does have your best interests at heart, and I think he's tried. And the fact that you still feel as you do despite that is a damning indictment of the government as a whole. Respond to that, please. Mick, and thank you. Thank nobody you. thinks it's going to change when Labour get in. Not one veteran I know thinks anything will change when Starmer gets in. So forget it. Mick, thank you very much for your call. Johnny Mercer, I think, has just said that he understands the outrage uh, around Rishi Sunak leaving early. Pat from Bridge End, what's your view on this? Do you think that this shows that Rishi Sunak is just completely out of touch? He just doesn't understand what the British people need and want? How could you not? Um, understand with all the programmes I watched yesterday um, recording the D-Day landings and he leaves early, there's no respect there, there was his advisers, whoever they were, totally out of touch I'm absolutely disgusted with the fact that he left and didn't go with the rest of the, the leaders to um, show some sort of respect for the, those who lost their lives on Omaha Beach. Well, I mean, hold on, Pat, young... he, he was there. He did show his respect. He just stepped out early he and didn't. left David yeah, Cameron. He did. Why did he step out early? There was no reason for him to step out early. He, he should have been there the whole day. We owed those young men from all our allies their respect mm. and I remember, to remember them with respect and with a terrible loss of life that they they gave us, you know. Mm. They fought for our country. We are here today because of what those young men did. Uh, thanks, you know, Pat. I'm, I'm Thank you so for your call. Annoyed. I, I, I can hear you're furious. I think a, a lot of people are probably feeling the same way. Uh, Rishi Sunak has said that it's simply not right to suggest that he considered missing D-Day commemoration events altogether during the general election campaign and to reiterate that he had made a mistake by leaving Normandy early. I don't know how much that would make Pat feel any better about the situation. I imagine not much. Steve from Leicester, do you feel the same way as Pat? Yes. Uh, if he'd got any morals, he'd resign today. What was that, Steve? Stephen? If Mr Sunak had got any morals, he would resign. Well, he's he's um, he 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 he's said that there's going to be a general election, you know. So he's giving you the vote to make your decision whether you want him in or out. Is that not good enough? No, because he's still there. And the general public have got to part, vote for a party that he's leading, if you vote Conservative. So do you think that this is a resigning matter then, leaving early from the D-Day events? Yes, I do. Stephen, are you a Conservative voter? <laughs> no. No. All right. Because I'd be interested to know if there are Conservative voters who now wouldn't vote Conservative because of what's happened. Because... The Conservatives are meant to be the party of defence. And for a Conservative Prime Minister to make a blunder like this on this sort of scale and elicit this sort of response from the British public is terrible. And this is not what we should be talking about today at all. But Rishi Sunak's mistake has meant this is all the country has But also it makes, it makes you, as someone who, quite, quite, you know, again, respect your position, Albie, you want, to, you want the Conservative government to win this election. Storm, I don't think we will. But and Storm is having to provide balance, and quite rightly so, as a presenter of a show and a totally neutral presenter. Sunak has put you both in almost impossible positions. Sunak himself recognises now that it was a mistake. The question is, and I repeat it, why did he not realise and why did his advisers not realise? Why did they not collectively realise yesterday that this was going to outrage the nation? Why didn't they realise it was a mistake then? Why did it take until this morning, after he did it, to apologise? I don't think to... anyone is going to disagree with the fact that it was a mistake. Albie and Matt are still here with me now. In the last few minutes, the Prime Minister has been speaking about missing the high-profile D-Day events to attend a TV interview, and he's apologised, saying that he wishes he had stayed in Normandy longer. Take a look. On reflection, that was a mistake and I apologise. I think it's important though, given the enormity 
of the sacrifice made that we don't politicise this. The focus should rightly be on the veterans who gave so much. I had the honour and privilege of speaking to many of them and their families, hearing their stories, expressing my gratitude personally to them. What do you make of that, Matt? I mean, it's a bit of a cheek, isn't it, for the Prime Minister to be lecturing the rest of us on politicising his decision for political ends to leave the D-Day 80th anniversary commemorations early. It is true, Albie. What did he leave it for? He left it for an interview to try and clarify that £2,000 tax comment he made in the leaders' debate. <sighs> it was an awful decision. And, you know, my head was almost in my hands watching that video thinking, gosh, how is this actually happening? It's almost like watching a, a car crash happen in slow motion. Look, he's apologised for it. He's apologised for, for it again on the cameras. It was excruciating that to was watch. That was not a proper as, apology. That as was starting to a point supporter, fingers at the rest of as us. As a supporter of Rishi Sunak, since his leadership election, that was excruciating for me to watch. And he needs to move on from this. And before the television debates tonight, where Nigel Farage is going to be up against Penny Mordaunt, what bigger sort of positive thing could you give to Nigel Farage against the Tories than this baton to whip the Tories with that the Prime Minister couldn't even be bothered to stay at the Normandy Albie, you're just being put in as head of PR for Rishi Sunak. What's your advice for him? What does he need to do now? I think he should have been doing that debate tonight from the beginning because at this point he's got nothing to lose, actually. He's so far behind in the polls. I think he needs to get all of the airtime he can as possible. Even without actually, Starmer. Even without Starmer. Even without Starmer and actually show how good he is. Like he did in the debate with Keir Starmer earlier on this week. He needs to be out there. He needs to be punchy. He needs to be on the front foot. And he needs to not be making blunders like this and showing the country the man that I know he is. All right, let's go back to the calls then. Andrew from Kent. What's your view on Rishi Sunak leaving the D-Day events early? Do you think this shows that he is out of touch? I mean, it was certainly a mistake. I'm I'm afraid I do. I, I am ex-REF and also a, a card-carrying Conservative, and I am currently seriously thinking about um, who I vote for. And my MP's brilliant. Helen Watley's my MP, and she's fantastic. But I'm voting for the, for the party, as most people, I think, do. And I, this is just the icing on the cake for me. I think we've had several years of this sort of attitude towards things at the moment, people in, in particular. And I think it, is, it was the gentleman's name, Mike, from Chester, or, or Chris, I do apologise. But I think he put it, I, I think he got it just right. I've, I've got friends who fought in the Falklands, and we've got the 42nd anniversary of the end of that war coming up on the 14th. And they, they were young 17-year-olds fighting on Mount Longdon with three para. And they've just been forgotten about. They've forgot, forgotten about then. They've forgotten about now. And I, I, don't, I just don't see any of this changing. And Andrew, just to confirm, you were a Conservative voter traditionally, so you are the very caller Albie was looking for. I mean, these are the votes that Rishi potentially could be missing now. They are. And Andrew, will you, will you consider voting for reform or someone like that now that this blunder has happened? No. No, this is, this is trouble. Uh, is there a credible alternative? And I honestly don't think there is. I'm a Conservative at heart, so I'm looking for somebody with true traditional Conservative values I, you know, I grew up with Maggie. Ironically, I come from a, a family of Labour and Liberal uh, Democrats uh, supporters. I know the struggle, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry? I know the struggle. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I grew up, I was lucky, I, I grew up in a period where Margaret Thatcher came into power. And she totally changed the direction of this country. Now, I know she's Marmite. You know, a lot of people look at what she did to the miners community mm -hmm. and, and look at it with abhorrence. But she did so much. And like I said, I go back to the fact we've got the... 40, not only have we got the 80th anniversary of D-Day yesterday, um, we've got the 42nd anniversary of the Falklands conclusion on the 14th. And Margaret was instrumental in making that happen. And, and to be fair, in 92, it probably got a, um, elected again. But she, she was... Oh, sorry, 80, 82 around then. Um, but she was just a breath of fresh air. We'd gone through the, the winter of discontent in, in the 70s. And, and I feel we were entering another period similar to that, but just, see, just different. Do you see any politician that is giving you sort of that Margaret Thatcher energy? I think Nigel Farage would quite like to think of himself as a bit of a Margaret Thatcher? No, no, I don't. I, I, I don't mind Nigel. I don't see any substance in, 
in, in what reform are telling me. You know, at the end of the day, we're talking about running the country. We've got massive budgets. The NHS is broken. The Ministry of Defence hasn't got enough money. You know, people are talking about serious, um, seriously uh, senior uh, military figures are talking about a third world war. Now, hopefully we're not looking at something like that. But say we were, where is this country if something like that happens? This is modern warfare and we are not ready for it. And I think that's partly because the Tories have run down the military to the extent that they have since 2010. Tens of thousands fewer people working okay, in but the I'll British be Army. Okay, the point that the Labour Party aren't committing to a 2.5 percent. And I've and I've I've responded to that because defense. I think Labour being very Doesn't cautious about about, about their about their costings to make sure that fiscal rules are upheld. I hope very much. If you ask, want to know what I think rather than what Keir Starmer thinks, I hope very much that Keir Starmer, if he becomes Prime Minister, will safeguard our armed forces and will take it very seriously. It's interesting what you, you say, though, about Nigel Farage wanting to be a, a Maggie Thatcher politician. He's not a Maggie Thatcher-type politician. Maggie Thatcher, and I mate. disagreed very strongly with her, but she was a serious politician who was Prime Minister for as long as she was, won three general elections with the Tories. Nigel Farage has tried to be an MP seven times so far, hasn't even won his own seat. But it is really important, this debate tonight, I think, because we are potentially at a crossover point. One poll this week, we've got to be careful with polls, particularly in the election period, one poll this week suggested that Tories are on 19% and reform are on 17%. And this blunder, disrespecting veterans, disrespecting the war dead, is a massive risk now to the Tory party well, because the reform could overtake them. That's one place where you and I will be agree on then. Andrew, thank you very much. Uh, Janet from Kent, also lots of calls from Kent today. What's your thoughts on Rishi Sunak? Is he out of touch? Uh, I think he is, yes. Uh, I've completely lost uh, interest now in the election. I think it's appalling he didn't stay till the end yesterday. When you think not only did our 100-year-olds make the effort to cross the Channel, people forget that the Canadians and Americans came across the Atlantic and sat outside all day. And I think it's absolutely appalling. And it's the last straw for me. It's the last straw. So you already were losing faith in Rishi Sunak. Had you ever I've, been a Rishi I've Sunak? I've conservative ever since I was 21, when I first got the vote. Can I, can I ask who you would be considering voting for now? Well, uh, the other thing, of course, is my lovely uh, MP, Craig McKinley, uh, is not standing again. So I would probably have voted Conservative because he's been a brilliant MP for Thanet. Okay. And, um, and, but, Janet, how old are you? I'm just interested to know how many elections you voted Tory in. Because, 77. Yeah, and that's extraordinary then. So you've been voting Conservative since you were 21 years old. And yeah. because of what happened yesterday, that is the With final the straw. straw. Yeah. Well, also the fact that your MP that you but like so much isn't standing. sitting there are there. We are sitting here because of them. That is my opinion. Janet, and thank, I think it's been thank, taken in total disregard. Thank you very much for your call. Tom from Essex, I'm running out of time here, but what's your thoughts? Has Rishi Sunak lost touch, lost your vote? As, as an ex-military man and family, I think it's absolutely disgusting and I would sooner see the back end of him straight away. And I think, Albie, I mustn't tell you what to do because that's it. But I'd like you to go back and think of your opinions because I'm not, it's not polite to tell you what I think of you at the moment. Oh, Tom, I was actually... he, Tom just, to, just to clarify, Albie has said that what Rishi Sunak do, done was a mistake, that he didn't agree with it, he didn't think it was the right thing to do. So he, you're kind of in agreement with that. Yeah, but the rest of what he says is... Um, Sorry, I mustn't be careful. I've got to be very careful what, what I say. What is it you disagreed with that I said? That, um, you know, we look after our military and everything else, and we do this, we do... I was actually psychologically discharged in the, the early... in the late 60s for, from military service, mm -hmm. and I have had no help or assistance at all. My sons don't know of my military experience, my son joined the Navy at 16. In the October, he passed out. In the February that year, he actually got posted and sent to the Gulf War at 16, came back psychologically inept, and he never got any support at all. 
So that's both yourself on. and your son. I'm I'm really, yeah. really sorry to, to hear that, Tom, and that is a very sad state of affairs, really, the fact that we've got people coming back and not being treated or cared for. We need to do, do much you more, think Do you think, think that another party would do better for you? Well, when he went to America on R&R &R a month later, he was only 17, and every American bought him a drink against the laws it's a in America. Tom, I absolutely yeah. hear you on that. It's a very different culture. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to wrap up. I have run out of time. It's a very different culture in America, and maybe we need to bring that culture to Britain a bit more. Tom, thank you so much for your call and everything that you've done for us as well. Thanks for all your calls on this. We're